Hello everyone, it's nice to be here in Łódź. I am from the department of, uh, we are from the department of modern languages and literatures from the Adam Mickiewicz University in Poznan. And me personally, I usually do not uh, deal with economics, as you may guess. Uh, we would like to uh, present on the so-called intercultural communication and about generalizations, because generalization is a very interesting capacity of human mind. We can do a lot thanks to generalizations, but sometimes it is also good to see what is behind them. So, well, first, the first thing that is not always visible in the inter cultural communication is a single context world. It means that we are immersed, as uh, uh, Edward T. Hall mentioned once, in our single context reality. So even if we say, all right, our partners are the same like us, there is no difference. We usually interpret their behavior through our own this is what uh, Ruth Benedict mentioned, cultural glasses, right? So this, uh, if it goes okay, if there is no problem, if there are no issues, it's no, it's, everything goes smooth. But if the issues emerge, then we ask why? How could they do this to us? They are not like us anymore, right? So this is the question of cultural issues. Uh, what differences and difficulties may arise? Well, this is the linguistics-oriented point of view uh, the first differences may be on the level of science of designates. This is, as you may say, this is 1915, this is, this is the famous definition of sign, of a linguistic sign, right? But when other factors uh, take the stage, we can see that it's not only science and designates, but it is the semantic triangle by Ogden and Richards. There are some ideas, some uh, associations with signs and designates. There are also, as Biller from the uh, Wynn School of Linguistics mentioned there are speakers' intention and reactions which may be different, and they may also be, as in the sixth element, uh, a communication model by Roman Jakobson uh, from the 60s, different emotions, references, poetics, static properties, metalingual pro uh, properties, and different responses. This is quite complicated because all these factors may be different of both sides. Uh, of the in intercultural communication. Uh, probably the best account of that was given by Bel Himes, who mentioned different forms of speech. So we may speak, everybody understands more or less what is spoken about, but there are also some different patterns of communication. And we shall mention these patterns, uh, which sometimes may uh, take the wrong direction. What may be wrong? Well. Uh, miscommunication. We usually disregard miscommunication. If we have any misunderstandings, then we explain it, right? But in fact, uh, in uh, human relations, uh, including uh, economical relations, if we have a miscommunication emerging, it usually means loss. It means more costs. It means less gain. No one wants it, but it does emerge, really. So we may uh, say that an international field of, uh, that, that the field of intercultural uh, communication is a field of increased risk of miscommunication. Because we may always say, okay, it's one context world, of course we are right, we know what is right, and our partner is wrong, because they are heterogeneous. And then, uh, of course, we may uh, have some informal insider bias, some exoticism, uh, we uh, may uh, interpret isolated events instead of their sequences. Uh, we may lack language competence and we may lack contact with language and culture. And this all is visible in metaphors, stereotypes, labels, especially in the one we would like to emphasize here, East against versus West. What is it actually? If it's Japan and Poland, is it East and West? Is Poland more East or more West? I don't quite know. But we have several sources, printed sources, which suggest very interesting solutions. First of them is Tartera Trompeners. It is quite a valuable source, actually. But we may see fragments like this. This is from Mr. Akio Morita of Somme, who complains at the American style of management. He says in America, 
if you are responsible for something, they shall scold you, they shall fire you. But we in Japan, we do it different. We do it in group. If someone does something stupid, then we say, just don't do it again. And we are harmonious, we are successful, right? Is it really so? Well, it would be nice if it was, right? But is it really so in Japan that even if someone makes a mistake, then they say, just look at this. Do not, just do not do the same mistake twice. It is a child mistake, right? Just do what you think is right. Is it really a Japanese attitude? Well, okay. Let us see the next stereotype, very interesting. A lot of conflict in Japan. Everything is harmonious, right? Everyone, they say hi, hi, hi. They never say no. This is a very characteristic fragment, right? Everybody is happy in Japan. There are no, there is no tension, there is no conflict, right? Yeah. They know how to solve problems. All right, is it really like that? Let us see at some actual examples of real concrete situations. Uh, Mr. Nikoi is going to present the three of them in the Japanese Polish environment. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Hiroki Nikoi and uh, I'm working in one of the Japanese companies located in the uh, Vavush Economic Zone uh, since uh, 11 years. And personally, I have lived in Poland uh, since 20 years and being husband of Polish women. <laughs> and so I'd like to uh, present you the three uh, concrete uh, cases it happened uh, really, which happened really in uh, Japanese uh, Polish cooperation environment and it they seems to us a very trivial one in a very tiny one but very caused a critical problem in the cooperation or management area so let's see what was what happened the first case uh, in which was involved three parties uh, the, a very experienced Japanese lean management uh, uh, trainer and the Polish employees of one of the Japanese companies and the Polish female interpreter. And the trainee of lean management uh, were, were not able to understand what was explained uh, by trainers and by interpreter, uh, although uh, the, the Polish interpreter uh, translated it into Polish very correctly. Uh, and uh, the trainees uh, repeatedly uh, pleased to uh, uh, explain again and again uh, to this interpreter. Uh, and this, uh, then uh, this interpreter uh, began to explain by using her own word, uh, a little bit uh, apart from the extent uh, transferred by trainers. And at the last, uh, she began to introduce them, uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, directly. <coughs> e yes, uh, already explained. And at last, yes, uh, seeing the situation, unfortunately, the Japanese trainer got furious at her uh, by uh, accusing her uh, for taking all over his trainer role and uh, yeah, ignoring him. It was, yes, misunderstanding, but it, yes, serious situation happened. And also this incident had a long-term impact because this interpreter was excluded, yes, from an interpreter role in this company and was treated by some of Japanese uh, stuff as uh, some kind of troublemaker in relation between Japan and Poland. The second one, uh, the new Japanese president of a company, production company versus Polish managers. Uh, a new Japanese manager of a production plant in Poland to call a present position uh, from his Japanese predecessor. And the previous president, uh, had very flat and open management style, so called pro European style, uh, and he was very respected by Polish management staff. Uh, 
On the other hand, the new president applied a very typical stiff Japanese management style characterized by authoritative, dominating, and strongly target uh, focused approach to Polish management staffs. And at last, yes, uh, unfortunately, during his first presidency, he lost more than half of uh, Polish management staffs because uh, the Polish staffs could not be uh, such mm, incorrect treatment from the, their point of view. In the sad cases, uh, it did not happen in the cooperation situation, but in the uh, academy, yes, in the one of the art academy in Poland. A Japanese professor was invited to the art academy in Poland uh, to give some lecture or lessons. And the academy, the, for the first days of his visit, organized an orientation event and asked the Polish female student with some yeah, Japanese language uh, competencies knowledge to accompany and support him. Uh, but the professor was very dissatisfied with being taught by young female student and re rejected to join the event. So unfortunately, some misunderstanding this was uh, happened. But explanation for this situation will fall here yeah, later on. Thank you. As you can see, as you could see in the in, in the three situations, there were no uh, physical injuries, right? There was almost nothing happened, right? But these are the situations that you, we would not like to happen at all, not to say again. So what should we do? Well, perhaps we should not, it is not quite a good idea to look at the simple opposition between East and West. I personally prefer the opposition between the uh, Japanese basic values and Polish basic values. And you may wonder uh, where did I get the impressions, the basic notions. Well, this is my own interpretation, translation practice. So this is the only way I can document them. It is not written anywhere. These are just postulates, right? In Japan, it's usually that people are viewed from the beginning as basically different. So it is obvious, right, that most relations are asymmetrical. And if someone takes a lower rank, uh, this is no problem. A lower rank is better than no rank. In Japan, uh, in Poland, it's a bit different because officially people are considered the same, equal. Most relations are viewed as symmetrical. I can do the same to you as you can do to me, right? And lower rank may be a shame and higher rank may uh, induce envy. Uh, then uh, in Japan, uh, a free exchange of views in official situations especially is not practiced too much. It is rather undesirable because we know that we differ, right? So why should we mention this? In Poland, it's the other way around. Usually, if you do not exchange your views freely, you are viewed as an enemy, right? You are not frank with me, right? We, can, we do not know each other. We cannot cooperate. Uh, in uh, Japan, uh, group relations, it's not groupism. It's not something like that, but group is important. We are responsible uh, to the group, right? In Poland, of course, we are responsible. There is also the notion of shame uh, uh, towards the group, but being individual is very important, right? If, if, if just acting like you like to act, right? Expressing yourself, this is quite important. Uh, then, uh, in Japan, hiding one's personal views is recommended as in ver it is very often practiced, especially, especially towards one's vertical senior. While in Poland, well, uh, hiding one's views may uh, rather make communication uh, difficult. Suspicious, yeah, that is suspicious. Yeah, you are not frank. If you're not frank, we cannot communicate. Okay. Then sincerity in Japan depends on context. Of course, with our colleagues, we are sincere. With our bosses, not exactly. While in Poland, if you are sincere, you are sincere everywhere, right? If you are not sincere everywhere, then yeah, this is this is suspicious, exactly. And then the last thing is that a role, role playing, role violation, ritual playing is very important in Japan. While in Poland, 
It is sometimes performed, but role violation is sometimes used as create doing something differently, uh, surprising someone, right, in Poland. This is, this is a positive value. In Japan, almost never. Well, uh, I shall also give you some Japanese behavior patterns which are presented. This is a classic work by Takie Sugiyama-Lepra from the 70s, from the University of Hawaii. And she uh, uh, works on two dimensions. The first is official and official. This is omote ura in Japanese. And the second is uchi and soto, private and public. And we have this set of values. As you can see, uh, this is this combination is impossible, right? Which is private and official. And this combination is also in Poland, as we shall see, it is uh, related to the sincere behavior, to something that is a fact. If something is a fact, we do not mention that. A fact is a fact. In Japan, there are two, according to Sugiyama Lebra, two uh, typical patterns of behavior. Uh, the two are exactly uh, intimate or ritual. And if you cannot act intimate, you just uh, search for a ritual and you execute the ritual and everything is clear, right? There is also the fourth type of situation. This one is close to the facts as this one is possibly farthest from the facts, right? The anomic pattern is treating someone like an enemy. It's uh, avoiding communication. This does happen in some situations in Japan, but no one wants it. So this is what uh, uh, Sugiyaba Lebra mentions. Uh, so we shall see that anomic pattern is used only in unpredictable situation, and it, 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 in most cases, intimate versus ritual. This is the most typical opposition in Japan. Of course, this is very basic, right? This is very basic. But in Poland, as you see it, this is my own proposition, based on the same dimensions and values, omote ura. Uh, in Poland, you have all four combinations, right? In here, in Japan, you have nothing. In Poland, you have sincere, yeah? We can talk about facts. Yeah, let us talk about facts. Which of us, of us can do it better, for example? Me or you, the boss, right? Which is not going to foster anything good, probably. And then we have an honorable pattern. This is my own term, that sometimes in Poland, Especially if you know someone who may be of a higher rank, it is good to go a step further, to make more for them, to impress them, which is completely unknown in Japan, right? Because in Japan, you have a ritual or you are intimate. If not, oshimaite gozaimasu. All right, then uh, we have relatively many patterns and ritual pattern is often avoided in Poland. If you play only rituals, you are boring. Right? This is the common conviction. And then honorable pattern is used, as I have already mentioned, uh, also uh, towards uh, strangers uh, we, uh, when their behavior is uncertain and may be uh, interpreted in the Japanese context as offensive. Okay, so if we have those three situations, then let us look at the first one, the trainer and interpreter. The interpreter wants to be sincere because it is a fact that the workers do not understand the trainer, right? And she wants to be honorable. She wants to do more than expected. She doesn't have to do it at all, right? If she didn't say anything, then everything would be okay, right? But she wants to do more, which is interpreted by the trainer uh, as a violation of the ritual. And his reaction is anomic, right? There is nothing harmonious in that. She didn't tell her, just do what you think is right. Right? No, there was nothing like that. Right? Of course, it may be that the trainer, that the interpreter was a third party worker, right? It is also possible. It may be that the interpreter was female, which quite also happens in the Japanese Polish environment, that an interaction between the Japanese male engineer and a Polish female interpreter is often not perfect. But this is another issue. Just look at the president versus managers situation, right? The president uh, applies strict ritual pattern, and perhaps in Japan, that would simply mean that the president is tough, right? You just have to endure. But Polish managers, they want to have their competences, right? 
they want to have the mansion they want to be uh, 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 not they want to act on the basis of facts which as we can see on the basis of ritual it is not possible right so there is an open conflict communication breakdown and probably a loss for the company we don't know how much it's quite difficult to calculate it but perhaps this should have never happened okay and the third one is a, the professor versus the student or a, versus the student or, or a guy uh, here we have an academic institution so it's not she the guide who wants to help the professor it's the institutional decisions if, if he doesn't know something all right she will guide him but it is not possible for many reasons probably but also for the sake of honorable uh, 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 reaction of the student, right, and the institution, and sincere assumption that the professor doesn't know something. Of course, a professor may not know something, but it is never mentioned in Japan. What for? Right? You do not teach anything to a professor. It is the professor who teaches, right? And this is the right, the ritual. And of course, uh, we have the anomic pattern again, the violation of the ritual. And here we have one more factor. First, it is a sex opposition, probably, because it is a female student. Then it is the age opposition. And then the third one, the professor might have simply been such a type of person that he just doesn't want orientation. I just don't want it, and don't ask me why, right? So this might not exactly be related to the previous opposition, but we never know. Okay, if we want to conclude, shall we conclude this? We, of course, do not want conflicts. We do not want uh, 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 communication loss, right? But stereotypes and schemes are not always useful for that. Perhaps sometimes the risk of miscommunication, which is always present, should be calculated as the background of communication and should be prevented, for example, by uh, a previous consultation or something like that, right? Uh, perhaps common code it's not always something that solves everything. It's, it's not always enough to have an interpreter to solve every communication problem, which is sad, but true. And then certain properties of situation patterns are repeatable. They may be described, and they may be uh, labeled. But not every label, something such as uh, dispersed east and west, not every label is really uh, useful uh, in the process of communication. Perhaps the lower the level of abstraction, if we apply to national standards, whatever national standards mean, Polish versus Japanese, Japanese versus Polish, this may be more effective. And then the last thing, which has been mentioned in one of the texts considering Europe and Asia, that is East and West, perhaps Asia as such does not exist. Because Asia is something that is opposed to Europe. And if it's opposed to Europe, it may be Israel, it may be Arabia, it may be Siberia, it may be Manjuria and that stuff, right? So there is nothing like Asia. And this is what I would like to say as my last word, but perhaps we have some more uh, some more conclusions. Should I? Yeah, uh, thank you. Yeah, rather than my comment uh, than conclusion, but the button should our second, yes, uh, cases. Uh, the Japanese president versus the Polish manager. Yes, the common language was English, in which the president was not so good at. And this multiplied, of course, the communication problem, but main issue, crucial issue was even the communication style, the differences, as uh, explained and uh, ritualized. Uh, the Japanese communication scheme versus the Polish uh, yes, sincere, sincere yes, the communication style. And it means that even if the language is com uh, com uh, appropriate, language skill competences are uh, uh, secured, it is enough. We should know the maybe the social code and the social uh, behavioral pattern, yes, of second languages to be, yeah, uh, understood well and communicate smoothly. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And now, please, questions and comments. Who would like to take floor? Comments. Yes. Comments. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah. No, no, no. Okay. Is it okay? We do not retreat. Yeah. <laughs> we are here. Okay. United first, States. The first question or comment. Uh, my comment is uh, as follows. Perhaps taking into consideration your uh, presentation, one can say that 
Polish nation has excellent qualification to be in union because we need to be treated as partners equal and perhaps some problems in some unions uh, have uh, its source in treating other countries with some kind of domination you mean the EU, right? The European Union? Yes. Uh -huh. Just in case. Just to make sure, okay. Uh, should I respond? <laughs> yes, you want. I, I don't know if, 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 I, if I have qualifications to respond to this question, but, you know, I think that it's good to take, uh, to, to, to pay attention at this honorable pattern. It's honorable pattern, it means that you go a step further for someone, but then you demand that they go a step further for you. And unfortunately, not everyone understands it, I think. So perhaps sometimes it would be good to go back to the ritual, which is symmetrical usually, and then to see what happens. If you do something for someone, they may not do the same thing for you. This is what uh, Nicolao Machiavelli said probably. I don't know if I translated, if I interpreted it uh, properly into Polish, that uh, uh, Giving is uh, something that constrains the giver, not the one who gets, right? So if you give too much, then you have already given everything. You, you cannot do anything, right? Yeah, this probably is something like that, but I, I may be wrong, of course. Thank you. Thank you. This. Uh, I'm working in, I'm, I'm belongs to the organization in Japan to help a foreign student uh, to get used to the, our university. And uh, in that organization, we have some like a uh, manifest for trying to understand uh, other culture. But uh, I think it's too ambiguous. I mean, it's too big concept. Now, what is very important for trying to understand the culture, yeah, other culture? Is also, uh, somebody said uh, we can make them to get used to our culture, but I don't want to kill their identity. So my main question is, so what is, is very important for try to understand their culture? So from my experience, I can say that, and uh, one of the newest uh, also uh, academic theory or the using also often the, in the business training area, it is empathy. To, to have empathy to understand but deeply, not so sophisticatedly, but deep, go deeply go to inside to other culture in, yeah, in order to understand uh, differences in other cultures, but standing on the viewpoint of the other cultures, not staying uh, our uh, yeah, uh, general, uh, original uh, cultural position. Yes. I think this is a very good approach, newest one. And I also in uh, private and vocational life, I try to keep empathy to second person. Okay. So uh, I would like also to ask one question. Uh, I'm especially uh, interested in this analog type uh, of behavior and Japanese patterns, and uh, as uh, for the further so sociological pattern, anomaly uh, means, as you said, enemy. So the, the society is an enemy uh, towards the individual. Uh, the society does not uh, give moral compass uh, how to behave uh, for the individuals. And this is one of the reasons for becoming uh, alienated and uh, for depression, uh, for mismatch of uh, beliefs, and also for detachment. Um, my question is, uh, do you think that uh, Japanese are especially uh, particularly prone to this analog pattern or not? No, I do not think so, but there are, of course, such uh, notions in the description of Japanese uh, of Japanese uh, uh, of Japanese 
uh, cultures such as haji, which is means shame, right? So economic, I think, in this respect, we should see it as you know as a balance to the pro-social behavior, right? So economic is that uh, you are aware that your position may not be acknowledged, so you try to act as you uh, should according to the ritual. Because ritual is difficult and it's sometimes boring, but ritual gives you certain results. And this is very important. Of course, we, should, we have to trust each other mm -hmm. in order to perform ritual. And even in Japan, people make mistakes. So uh, it is important to, uh, uh, not, to, not to be too strict, mm -hmm. right? But it is good to have this basis of a ritual, and th 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 there is something good, something profound in the ritual. Not everything, but there is something good, I guess. I don't know if I respond to your question. Yes, I'm quite satisfied. <laughs> is there another question, please? Uh, so, uh, we have still time, so I would like to comment uh, also on these uh, ranks. You said that in Japan, uh, no one is um, embarrassed with his lower ranks or his superiors, but uh, the shame is to be of no rank. And in Poland, we are definitely embarrassed being of uh, lower ranks. It happens very often that uh, we just, it's a kind of an envy, or not uh, believing in one's uh, competences. Um, this is quite um, surprising for me, but this uh, is in encouraging also uh, for Polish people to act like Japanese. They are what they are. I am what I am, and I'm proud of it. If not, I'm working uh, to change, yes? Is it something true or I just exaggerated a little bit? Uh, yes. Yeah. I, I'm, you know, not a sociologist, I'm an economist, so maybe I'm just taking some, you know. So, yes, uh, I'm not sure if I go, I'm able to give uh, this question the correct answer, but what I'd like to emphasize that, yeah, last, uh, is the very important point. The cooperation between Japan and Poland goes very well. It shows that the program it, uh, uh, I we showed you is only the uh, yes uh, part of our negative part of our cooperation. But generally, our cooperation goes well. Uh, the one reason uh, evidence is we are in a com company here many Japanese expatriates worked. And they had uh, a lot of experiences over uh, working in other overseas plants in China, in North America, Brazil, and uh, Thailand, and so on. And I asked them in which country of them uh, they worked very well, or with which uh, uh, nationalities they worked uh, well, according to their opinion. And uh, without any exception, they said Poland. Yeah, I don't know why, but I personally feel we have some similarity in mentalities, and it is the base of our good co cooperation. And I hope it will be more developed and will have a very rosy future in the economy. It's a good co conclusion, <laughs> I think. Uh, any more questions? So if, if not, you would like to applaud. <laughs>